originally settled during the gold rush days in the 19th century, Wanaka is a town sheltered behind the Southern Alps in the South Island of New Zealand. Mainly a resort town, it has experienced a large growth with a population increase of up to 50% in the past 10 years. And for the past six years, it's the Sangrila for Dame Suki Turner after retiring as mayor of Dunedin in 2004. We, we've always loved Wanaka and Central Otago and um, just enjoyed the, you know, the, the wonderful sort of outdoors and um, just a very, should we say, laid back lifestyle. Best thing is being relaxed and being able to do what one wants to do and rather being driven by the clock. You know, you, you're, you're not sort of saying, oh, yeah, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. I think it's just more relaxed. One of her great passions is gardening, and she's been doing a lot of that with a helping hand, husband Glenn Turner, a former prominent New Zealand cricketer. I must admit that I, I never thought that um, I'd be able to do so much weeding, but as one could expect, you know, Suki has me doing uh, most of the menial tasks in the garden. I dig the holes and uh, I cut the grass. Um, she does the plantings and the specialised pruning with roses and, and the like. Um, because I think she believes she can do it better and she's probably right. I remember watching a series called The Good Life and, and I thought that was a, an idyllic way to actually be, sort of to produce your own food. And, um, and, and you know, and of course everyone sort of got into uh, you know, eating well and eating healthily and eating things that are, you know, doesn't have pesticides in it, etc. So I thought it'd be quite nice to actually have a vegetable garden. So, you know, it's quite nice to be able to do that and spend time. And of course, the garden is, of course, something that's a work in progress and it's never done, you know. So we've got lavender as well, which, you know, which I sort of like to dry and sort of give around to family and friends. It's very calming, lavender. The couple's been married 38 years after first meeting in Mumbai in the late 60s when Glenn, an up-and-coming cricketer, was on tour with the New Zealand cricket team. But cricket is something which is not discussed much in their household. I'm not a real cricket fan as such, you know. I'm a, I, I just feel that what they should be doing is playing fairly. You know, I'm very concerned about all this, you know, match fixing and stuff. You know, I don't think that's very good. That's not, you know, playing fair, is it? Well, it's worked out well, actually, over the years, uh, that Suki, being uh, a Sikh, Sardani, and uh, in those days when she was being brought up in Punjab, of course, hockey was the main sport there. Cricket certainly wasn't. Her parents didn't really follow cricket. And I found that was ideal, because uh, if I came home and I'd done badly, I didn't have to hear about it. And if I'd done well, it didn't matter anyway, because it was fine. So it, it meant that in the household, uh, things were kept on very much a, a par or a level uh, playing field, you might say. And, uh, and, and that was really good to have that stability, you might say. And it also helps that uh, Suki isn't really uh, a great cricketing fan, so that when New Zealand are playing against India in cricket, uh, there isn't civil war in our household. Dame Suki was first elected mayor of Dunedin in 1995, after spending three years as a councillor. She was the first non-conservative mayor of the city in 130 years, after beating long-serving incumbent Richard Wells. Distinguished guests, councillors, Ladies and gentlemen, this is a moment of great joy and great pride for me. I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm the first woman and the first non-European ever to have been elected to this high office. This is what she told me then as to why she got interested in seeking the mayoralty. You know, in the last three years, we've been doing things back to front. And uh, my campaign was about putting first things first and common sense priorities. And one of those priorities was water and electricity. Have you had any regrets? Not at all. No, it's, it's, it's been a stimulating experience and uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting job. She was subsequently re-elected twice, 
Retiring from the position in October 2004, making way for the first Chinese mayor of the city, Peter Chin. I just felt that uh, this was a good time to go. I think some politicians stay in politics for too long. And I certainly didn't want to become a career politician. And, and I believe that, uh, it, you know, the city needed a change, a little bit of uh, a fresh blood is always good. And, you know, let someone else have a turn. During her mayoralty, she was often labeled a greenie and a left-leaning mayor. I think I'm actually a very pragmatic person. And by, by left, if you mean that uh, my principles of the greatest good for the greatest number, then I am definitely left. And I call myself a socialist as well, because you want the best for as many people as possible. Born Sukinder Kaur Singh, she was awarded the Dame Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2002. She was also much respected by the Otago student community, and when she retired, was given a life membership of the Students Association. The last nine years as Mayor Suki has led and enhanced the city's reputation as being a great place for students to be. She's been supportive of students in the city, she's welcomed them with open arms, and she's supported us in all the type of issues that we need support with. We're thankful to have somebody like that in the top job at Dunedin City, and uh, on her retirement, we think it's more than worth recognising. Back in Wanaka, she reflects back to her time in politics. Well, I think it was a diversity of what I was doing, from sort of being entertaining the rich and famous to really being concerned and trying to solve the issues of my constituents, uh, as it, things like quit baths and um, uh, safety in uh, playgrounds um, to uh, clean water. She's particularly concerned about the huge debt students have to undertake to get an education. As a country, you know, if you can't actually give the gift of knowledge to the next generation, what, what can you do? And, and, and I think that we've become a harsher society because of that. Because I think those people who've had to pay and had to struggle, and it's not just students, it's apprentices as well, you know. I think that as, as a community, and as people in New Zealand, I think from, from when I was here in 73 to 2011, I think we are now a much more um, harsher community. You know, there are many more social problems now. And she has no regrets moving on from yeah. politics to looking after poultry. It was interesting that, you know, the transition from that hasn't been too much of a problem. And um, I'm enjoying not having to answer the phones all the time and, and have ro uh, room and space for myself. But you just move forward and do other things. And um, there's plenty to do here. Someone who has come into her life and keeps her happily occupied is a granddaughter, Maya, who visits often from Wellington. It's delightful to actually have her and spend time with her. And this is one of the joys of actually, you know, being uh, semi-retired. You can actually do what you really want to do. And um, it's just wonderful engaging with um, uh, our only grandchild. It must be one of the most joyous things, I think, that can happen to people to, to have grandchildren and uh, see them grow up. And um, to me, I've, it's very important to actually spend as much time as I can with her. Maya tags along when we visit one of Dame Suki's favorite places in Wanaka, the Ripon Vineyard. That's one of the first vineyards um, in, in central Otago. And, um, and they've just constructed a, a building there which is uh, right from the earth, really. They've used their own soil to make, um, make the building work, and, and yeah. it's very environmentally friendly. And they've you know, followed all the sustainability principles. And of course, and what a view they have from there. It's, you know, it's just something to die for, really. It's not all fun and games for Dame Suki. She's continued her involvement in community-related activities as she did in Dunedin before getting into local government politics. She is the chairperson of the Alpine Community Development Trust, 
which runs the Wanaka community networks in the township. It's this one place where people can actually get information about various things. In, in the social development area, we've actually got a, a, a social worker who works with us, and also information for our uh, travelers and information for uh, people who come to Wanaka for the first time. Um, any, anything that you want, it's, it's like a Citizens Advice Bureau. She has got obviously a very good understanding of local and central government operations. She's also used to um, managing and running a governance type structure, which is what Meryl and the council is. Um, so yeah, she's been a very useful addition to the, to the trust and a very good guide for, uh, for us here trying to run community networks. And Bring the ends together. Press, press it down pretty firmly. Back home, Dame Suki still loves to cook the Indian cuisine she's always been well known for. And while happy and content with her more leisurely way of life, she's concerned for New Zealand's future. She's remained passionate about sustainability, the environment, and keeping our country clean and green. We watch very carefully at um, the way that people want to develop areas. And we want to make sure that that this place is is given to the next generation in in a in the most healthy way possible. We're never far away from the outside world. Um, we keep close contact with what's going on uh, around us here, and, and as far as the world is concerned, because Suki's got a a very agile mind, and and she's always interested in what's going on in world politics. So you can do it from little old Wanaka. Um, and we're rather glad that we've uh, chosen to do that. So, has Dame Suki Turner given up politics for good? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you can't be definite about things, you know, oh, I'm never going to do this. Can you ever say that? You know, so, who knows? Mm -hmm.